The beginning, the first Coke ovens plant, consisting of 180 copy non byproduct ovens with coal crushing and handling plant, got completed, and the ovens were successfully placed in operation on September 12, 1911. Initial production was 500 tons of Coke per day which was then considered adequate for feeding the two 250-ton-per-day blast furnaces. The installation was divided into two batteries of 90 ovens each, with a coal service bunker of 2,000-ton capacity in the middle. In 1913, 30 drag-type ovens were added, which were subsequently augmented by the addition of 30 ovens of the same type in 1914, and three more batteries of 90 ovens in 1919. These ovens were built of ordinary red bricks in the form of rectangular chambers. They were also of the non-recovery type. The outbreak of World War I saw the installation of 50 coppers ovens. They were of the regenerative type and along with them was installed the first byproduct recovery plant designed on the coppers system. During 1922 to 24, the coking capacity was augmented by the installation of three Will Putter batteries of 50 ovens each growth in the 1930s with the production of nearly a million tons of hot metal in 1935 to 36 the need for a further increase in coking capacity was evident action was accordingly taken to install a new simon carves battery of 54 ovens in line with the will putter ovens the new ovens were of the underjet compound regenerative type with a twin flute system of vertical heating suitable for firing with either coke oven gas or blast furnace gas, or a combination of both. The battery was complete with all the ancillary equipment, such as ram leveler, door operating machine, coke guides, door extractors, charging car with automatic waybridge, coke quenching locomotive, and coke quenching car. Coke plant in the 40s. The two Will Putter batteries by 1938 to 40 had outlived their usefulness and were replaced by two more Simon Carves batteries of 55 ovens each identical in design and dimensions to the first Simon Carves battery. Thus, until 1951, a total of 214 ovens constituted the entire Coke oven installation, 50 of which were of the Wilputer design and 164 were of the Simon Carves design. The output of the Wilputer battery was reduced to approximately 160,000 tons of Coke from the rated capacity of 180,000 tons. Therefore, in 1951, the remaining Wilputa battery was dismantled to provide space for installation of a fourth Simon Carves battery, Coke plant and the TMT. Towards the end of 1955, the steel company embarked on the 2 million ton expansion program TMP. Until then, the Coke oven installation comprised four batteries with a total of 216 ovens of 20 ton capacity each, carbonizing about 4,800 tons of coal per day. With the implementation of TMP, the coal throughput increased to 6,800 tons. To cope with this, the following facilities were added. A. Rebuilding of battery numbers. 2 and 3, which comprised 55 ovens, 3 each. Battery number 2 was increased to 67 ovens and battery number 3 to 57, thus adding 14 ovens. B. Installation of a new battery, number 4C, with 26 ovens of 20-ton capacity each. C. Mechanized coal unloading and blending facilities. D. A new wharf. E. A new coke screening station with a capacity of 200 tons per hour. F. Increase in capacities of byproduct and benzol plant facilities. Coke plant till 1980s. With the completion of the TMP, the strength of the coke oven batteries went up to 256 ovens to carbonize 6,800 tons of coal per day, which was considered adequate for the production of hot metal for 2 million tons of ingot steel. In 1965, decision was taken to build another battery of 54 ovens in two independent blocks of 27 ovens each. The contract was awarded to Simon Carves, UK. The battery has a capacity of approximately 300,000 metric tons of metallurgical coke based on a 360-day operating year with a size grading of 125 mm to 40 mm which operating with a gross coking time of 16 hours. The ovens are of the auto compound underjet, hairpin flue, twin regenerator, single waste gas flue type and have been designed for being fired by either coke oven gas or blast furnace gas. 
or a combination of both. Pioneering of stamp charge technology. With time, it was decided to go for technological change, which came in the form of stamp charging. This method allowed usage of low-grade coking coals to be blended and stamped to give better quality coke. Keeping this in focus, Tata Steel embarked on the journey of converting to stamp charge technology and from 1989 till 2000, it became the largest stamp charging complex in the world. The advantages of this route of coke making that promoted this decision were quite a few. A. Good quality coke using more of poor quality coking coal. Nearly 100% usage of captive coal without any adverse effect on coke. Quality has been made possible. B. Coke strength is less sensitive to change in coal blend. C. Conservation of scarce prime coking coal. D. Higher productivity per oven as well as lower operating expenditure. E. Higher yield of sized coke. BF operations improve with consistent quality of coke. 